All right, so this is the Pittsburgh brake bleeder and vacuum pump kit. They're real inexpensive. I think I paid like 20 bucks, but uh, I was having a little bit of trouble and reading through some of the comments online and a little bit of common sense. And I just wanted to share some things that might help uh, whoever buys one of these because I just bought it. Obviously, it's really dirty, but I just did the other three wheels. And now I'm an expert. Now, I, I figured I'd give it a shot showing you guys some things that I did learn. So first off, I haven't done this wheel yet. So what you would do, obviously, is you would place this on the brake bleeder nipple there and then one thing I would suggest is don't let this fall and turn sideways if it does and it it goes through see where it says two pump if you get the brake fluid in that side and it pulls into this this is ruined the seals will actually become damaged so you got to position it so that it doesn't go anywhere so here's something to cut holes in doors I mean just anything really just to make sure it doesn't go flying over on you something that's gonna hold it steadier Obviously, once there's fluid in it, it will be a little bit heavier and it'll sit a little bit more stable, but just something to let it sit so that you can keep this position so that it doesn't suck through. As a matter of fact, I'm going to clear that out because uh, I do actually see some fluid that worked its way through when I was um, moving this around. Okay, so um, basically what I would suggest is you place this on the nipple, obviously, and then you want to try to get a vacuum going first. Now, uh, one tip, you're gonna see what potentially happens. Now, I haven't done this one yet to see exactly, but once you have a vacuum, then you wanna crack it open at that point. So you can see I'm gonna open it up a little bit. Okay. And you see a whole lot of air bubbles, but actually a pretty good flow. Um, what you wanna do, if you have something like this, what I would suggest, now, sometimes you'll see very little flow. So I'm gonna give you two troubleshooting techniques. Number one, um, you would unscrew this and then put some type of a thread sealant on this screw and then put it back in. And I'll do that in a second and show you what that looks like. The other thing is, is that if you barely have any flow, maybe these types of bubbles flowing through, when that looks like that, as you're doing the thread sealant, if you choose to do that, or even if you don't, you have to get into the car, push the brake pedal down once, twice, maybe three times all the way to the floor with this nipple open this attached and vacuum on here. So leave the vacuum, open this up, push the brake all the way to the floor if you're doing a one-man job because that means that there may be a clog in here or somewhere. Uh, most, well, most, most likely it's going to be this little nipple here. And so once you push that out, you'll clear that out and you'll see a regular steady flow. But a lot of people have trouble with these because the suction can't get past the clog right here. So you could take this off, you could try clearing it or Again, just shove the brake pedal all the way down to the floor. So I'm going to come back in just a second, and I'll show you what it looks like after we do the, uh, the thread sealant on there, the difference. So I put the thread sealant in. Let's get a vacuum. Now, one other thing I did want to mention is before, and now getting the vacuum before I open it up, one thing I did want to mention is if you leave this up, you'll allow the bubbles to work their way up and out. So if you can position this upward, obviously this, again, making sure that it didn't turn double check to make sure no fluid worked its way because if you set this down you'll see fluid that'll try to work its way out of this container and into this tube and then once you start the suction it pulls that brake fluid in and then it's no good so make sure it dumps back into here now we'll go ahead and open this up and we'll see what this looks like here look at that smooth stream and that's what we were looking for so I have quite a bit of uh, I've opened it up quite a bit it's going in fine the vacuum is pulling down real slow and again, nice smooth stream, very few bubbles. Um, and I didn't grease the, grease the nipple. A lot of people suggested that. That's another thing you could do. I didn't have to do that. Um, I literally just using that little bit of thread sealant on there, um, basically took care of it. And then it's a slow process, but you can just watch the fluid clear out. Uh, and that's basically it. That's how you get this $20 item working well. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Went for a quick test drive, running well. Um, I did want to make one additional note. The, uh, the thread seal I used on the nipple was Teflon tape. I used a little bit. It wasn't to correct the threading. There's nothing wrong with the threading. It was literally just um, to prevent any air from getting sucked in by the vacuum. So if you have any issues with your threads on your bleeder um, screws, you need to address that. That's a, that, that could be um, a problem. And, of course, you don't want to break fluid leaking at any point. The Teflon was just enough to prevent the air from getting sucked in also on the bleeder screws it should be noted that on the sides of them there's a little tiny orifice little hole there um, that's where the brake fluid will pass through 
And so you need to make sure that you're not putting Teflon tape over that hole. So when you pull the bleeder out, if you do decide to put Teflon on the threads, make sure it doesn't go over the hole um, because, you know, that would render the whole process useless, basically. So that was basically it. just a little follow-up letting you know. Um, you guys take care now.